My name is Philip Cloutier, President and CEO of Cartier Resources, listed on the Toronto Ventures Exchange, ticker symbol ECR. And our flagship project is the Chimo Mine uh, project, uh, which spans almost 40 kilometers of Lard Lake Cadillac Fault. We've embarked on a 25,000 meter diamond drill program recently and published a fourth mineral resource estimate for the project. And uh, we're also working on a PEA. That's about it. Philip, uh, really nice to be on the call again with you. Uh, so good to see you again. There's been lots of progress uh, at the project level. Now, in this interview, I'm going to be asking a range of questions, not so much about the project itself, but more about how you view the company, um, about the shareholder register, about the plans, about the, how you look at the market. Um, so if you're happy with that, let's let's crack on. Fire away. <laughs> good. Um, <clears throat> so... One of the key things for investors when they're looking at a company is to understand, you know, who makes up the shareholder base of the company, how they how they became shareholders of the company, and what their expectations are, and, and are the the alignment of interests between management and existing shareholders and any potential new shareholders. So, kind of as a starting point, could you just tell me about the shareholder register of the company? Right. Right now, we have about 278 million shares outstanding. It's comprised of 17.7% ownership by Agnico Eagle Mines, 16.6% by O3 Mining, uh, roughly 8 to 10% the Quebec Sovereign Funds uh, man Management and Board. Long term, and by, by what I mean, at least 10 to 15 years, long-term retail of about 26%, which leaves us with about a free float of 32%. And I could dive into how that was constructed if you have a few more minutes. Yeah, please, I'd like to, well, I'll come back to the other bits, but let's just talk about that that 32% kind of um, uh, float, if you could. Yeah. Well, indeed, I think uh, that 32% free float has turned around in the last few years, we've actually constructed an entirely new demographic of shareholders, mainly because of what we have accomplished uh, 2016 onwards. Uh, I'd like to remind you that in 2012, in the midst of one of the you know, financial crisis, we kind of reoriented our company to look at higher level projects, more advanced exploration projects and bought four projects with historical deposit and resource estimates on it. One of them, which is our flagship today, is the Chimo Mine. That eventually ag attracted Agnico Eagle. So in 2016, Agnico Eagle uh, contributed $4.5 million to our treasury in exchange for 19.9% .9 of the shares. That sponsorship attracted that very next year, 2017, uh, upwards of $15 million. We then got to work from 2017, 18, 19, and 2020, and drilled 60,000 meters on the Chimo Mine project and produced three resource estimates. Uh, in 2020, though, the Chimo Mine project was a very smallish, land position, maybe a two kilometer strike length. And we were faced with having boundaries, you know, bound, property boundary issues. We knew the mineralization extended to the east and to the west. And at depth, it would eventually plunge onto our uh, competitor's ground, uh, roughly around two kilometer depth. And so it was imperative that we, um, uh, we, we work towards a, a partnership or consolidating the land position. So in 2021, we did some exploration on another one of our projects, produced the third resource estimate on Chimo, but essentially initiated the discussions towards the land consolidation. With so O3. Three. With O3 mining. So you can yeah. see me. So in 2000, well, first quarter, early second quarter of 2022, we closed the deal with O3 mining. Whereas in exchange for 100% ownership of lock, stock, and barrel of their land position, uh, 
we tendered them 17.5% ownership of Cartsy. It was a sh- a f- in- entirely a share payment, uh, which they believe, I, I suspect, would then be re-rated through our continuing grow- growing of Chimo. And well, that what happened then is um, uh, Agnico had been diluted down to 13-ish percent. Uh, and Agnico, by virtue of an investor rights agreement, you know, have, had a participation rate, which they exercised. And so that constituted the most recent, what was perceived as a financing of $1.8 million, where it was actually really a, an exercise of their participation rate. And so that's why they, they climbed back up to 17.7% ownership of current shares. And, 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 and why over- three diluted from 17.5 down to 16.6? Exactly. And at that point, uh, mid the year this year, we had $6.5 million in the bank, but we're, we're really getting moving on designing the exploration program to further investigate the, um, the extension of the mineralization that we had seen at Chimo Mine. Uh, and then what happened also is that we had quoted the addition of the resource estimate that was on the West Nordo deposit, which was just barely... 450 meters east of the Chimo mine infrastructure in our resource. And we added those resources to our resource. Well, obviously the SEs or the IROC or regulators don't like to see that. They, in order for you to add resources, they must be produced by the same issuer. And they had been produced by two different issuers at two different dates. So the first thing we did was provide a consolidated resource estimate of the West Nordo deposit to the Chimo Mine uh, Project Gold System. Is and that now, what came out? Is that what came out in August, the, the end of August? August. So if you add the uh, in the indicated resource, uh, you have seven hundred twenty thousand indicated uh, gold uh, ounces and one point six three three million ounces in the inferred category. Keep in mind that those those inferred ounces are all within or near. Uh, you know, the, the Chimo mine past producing infrastructures, shaft and drifts. And so once that was delivered, we took the handbrake off the PEA that we had launched in November 2021. And so, uh, and so throughout that entire, from November 2021 to actually today, there's been roughly 70 to 80 million shares that had shift, ha, has shifted hands for several reasons. One, uh, uh, investor impatience. Two, the market conditions. And, uh, and three, well, because the you know, funds are repositioning themselves right now on, on, onto different, um, different industries or, or, or takes. So did you say 70 or 80% has changed in, since November 21? 70 to 80 million shares. Since so November 21. Yeah, that's almost uh, one third of our, yeah. of our float. And, and, and that's not to be taken lightly because uh, 40% of our float, as I previously mentioned, is in tight hands. So, you know, there has been sellers, but there has been some astute, sophisticated buyers that are looking at this and say, whoa, this is clearly undervalued and I'm going to take a position now, even though... But- even though Cartsey is on a path to production process that may take months to years to deliver the next value proposition here. Okay, well, we both know, and everybody watching this knows that the market is terrible at the moment. Yep. Um, uh, just your, your market capitalization today is just under $20 million US, kind of 26, 27 Canadian. Um, so on, a, on an EV per, Per or resource, um, e- or kind of an EV per resource ounce, you're at about eight dollars an ounce, which is very, very low. Um, yep. but it's not you're not unique, you know. There, are, I can point to 10 other companies or more that are trading on that basis. Yes. Um, it's a function of the market. W- w- what's what are the conversations that you're hearing from funds that are able to deploy long term capital? Because, um, you know, the, the rule of thumb is $50, $50 an ounce is a fair price for a resource ounce in the ground when it's 
uh, when it's it's got a good line of sight on, ac- on of economic development, you know, when it's likely to become a uh, deposit. Um, mm-hmm. And eight dollars an ounce is a long way from that. Let's go. I mean, even if it's ten dollars, you know, you're a twenty percent, eighty percent discount. Um, what are what what are you hearing from the funds that you speak to? They're kind of the long term money. Well, obviously, they want to see the project to continue be de risk, um, and 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 that is understandable. Uh, mining companies that go into M and A many years ago would look at the ounce count. Now they're they're looking at the ounce count plus. Have you de-risked it? Have you taken away some of the risk factors? And that's what we that's what we continue to do. Um, the funds they're looking at this, and they they're they're the constant criticism will be the grade. Well, our grade is similar to the comparables uh, along the fault that are mining vault mining underground, and so that's not an issue for us, especially since we have demonstrated that our mineralization is amenable to ore sorting. So the PEA right now is, and, 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 and that's not to be taken lightly because uh, the accusation that a grade is low, well, that grade will essentially be doubled by the time it's hauled to surface. And hang on, so- hang on, hang on. So, so much information in that. I just wanna, I just wanna kind of break that down and go a little bit slowly. Um, in the middle of August, you put out a news release saying that you're gonna do 25,000 meters of drilling over the next th- 13 months. And the kind of the headline I saw is that you're going to increase uh, resources at Chimo and at Norest. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've written here kind of de-risk question mark. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, because how much is, of that effort is going into um, growing new ounces and how much is going into de-risking? Because you were just then talking about de-risking as being a valuable part, but the news release talks about resource growth. So I just okay. clarify really, for me, please. Very good point. The, the drill program is strictly focused on growing the resource base. We're not going to be doing any infilling right now. Yeah. The risking process is we have a project that has a very robust database. We have uh, competitors uh, and local examples of 25 years of mining innovation being put into practice locally, right? Uh, vertical conveyors underground. Uh, ore sorting, bolt mining, um, uh, and, and various metallurgical advancements that the last 25 years brought to our industry and especially locally. Uh, things like the Young Davidson mine, the Lower Mine, uh, the Alamos project in Matachuan, uh, the Odyssey project, which is a partnership between Yamana and Agnico. Uh, they're going to be mining a relatively low grades at the kilometer depth. Uh, and then there's gold X as well. So we're, we're, we're looking at these situations and building that into the preliminary economic assessment. We are building into the project risk lowering uh, elements in order to come up with a preliminary economic assessment, which will be robust and will, you know, cater to the, the local, you know, the local mining uh, uh, attributes of the, of the project. And then, and, and not only that, but will give us a, a path forward to what we need to continue doing on this project to continue building ounces and de-risking it and setting on a, setting it on a path to production process. Thank you. Goodness. Again, more, more stuff to unpack. Um, <laughs> uh, more questions to ask. It, it, so, it's not a simple story. It's, it's no, you know, every mining story is it has its own complexities. Um, this one we feel is simple in the fact that it's in a tier one jurisdiction, access to manpower, and in, in, in a proactive fiscal and, and uh, political jurisdiction. Um, but it it's not built yet, and we have to build that. So, um, could you? Okay, so a very uh, simple question. Describe to me more about the oil sorting process and when does it come into effect and in the if so for, so from the from the mine does it when you when you're at the heading or the development phase do you muck it out and you know how does that first yeah. sorting happen and what are the impacts on costs okay first, rough roughly roughly well first step first 
while we were drilling this from 2017 to 2019, we collected a sufficient amount of samples, representative samples, to send to firstly the Steiner facilities in Kentucky that have ore sorting, you know, uh, calibration techniques, and the uh, a metallurgical lab here in Quebec. Both independent, separate tests came with relatively the same conclusions. You by Mining the mineralization underground at Chimo, the ore sorting process can separate roughly 50% of what you've mined out into waste and ore and, and, and enhance the grade by about 170%. Now, originally... Uh, originally, is, originally is, is this XRF? XRF and optical, because there is, there is, there's actually six different facies of mineralization uh, underground at Chimo. Uh, two of them, which are in the quartz uh, component, right? Uh, yep. And that's free gold. And, uh, uh, and, and the rest of them, which are uh, variably interlocked in the arsenopyrite mineralization that we're seeing uh, underground, high grade, medium grade, and low grade. Uh, and, and so both XRF and, and optical sensors are able to sort that. And, and it's really efficient. And what happens is you're able to take 50% of that stuff that you blasted out and sort that as waste, which will but never you, get the surface. Is this after primary crushing or secondary crushing? The primary crushing. And, and, and then there's, I, have to, I have to temper that. They, they're going to have to continue doing tests because optimally you could, you could even sort better if you crush more, but the trade-off yeah. That's extra cost. So there's they have to fine tune that. Now the the great the the most important thing is that originally we were seeing this ore crusher system at surface. These ore crushing cells at surface. Yeah. Um, I've been told that the PEA people are 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 saying no 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 we're going to put that underground. Uh, they're going to blast roughly five thousand tons per day, but only haul about half of that, which is 2,500 tons to surface. The other 2,500 tons will never see light of day and will never be manipulated twice and, and, and they will be used to backfill some of the stopes. So what we're looking at is using the shaft capacity and the ramp capacity to exit about 2,500 tons per day with a higher grade than what is indicated in the resource estimate. And you save on the hauling costs. And save on the hauling costs, eliminate further environmental scarring at surface, right? Uh, and save on, uh, well, transportation and, 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 and transportation. Well, actually, we're going to be building, or the plan is to build a mill on site to process that. It's a build-it-yourself type situation because... Um, the scenarios of toll milling will essentially always exist, right? Yeah. So once you've produced a build it yourself approach, people are looking at that and say, well, here, well, the potential competitors say, well, hell, I have a mill. This is what I could offer as plus value if we, if we, 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 we haul it over to our site. Now, um, these kinds of projects, these kinds of innovations, such as the ore sorting, yeah. um, You've, you've said that they're being used in the region, but um, sometimes they, they're, they're sitting within major companies or mid-tier companies, so you don't actually see the technical detail. It doesn't get published in PEA, it doesn't get published in a technical report, simply because it's buried internally within a bigger, a bigger organization. So um, when you incorporate this data into the PEA, it should give you enhanced economics. This is why you're doing it. Um, <clears throat> And then the, the, the key thing is, you know, does the market care, you know, at the no, moment? No, it doesn't. It, the market will not appreciate these finer details or sorting or different techniques and, and, and how you're going to mine this. I, I don't think the retail has that capacity and I don't want it to have it really. Um, but you have to understand that when a project is advanced, such as ours, it caters to a different audience, which is the corporate world or the fund managers. And, and they have the sophistication to appreciate that. 
Um, but to answer your question, no, the retail does not appreciate the ore sorting, the innovations, the fact that Quebec has hydroelectricity that can make this mine greener, so to speak. Um, no, that's lost on that retail audience. Well, some of the retail audience is very sophisticated. I, you know, I speak to the retail audience at Crux, and it's it's a formidable level of inquiry, um, which is uh, not just unique to Crux, but there are people out there who are, you know, engineers some, and and very very highly qualified. Some people um, are a little because obviously, when I mentioned that seventy to eighty million shares had traded and flipped over. I do suspect they were recuperated by that tranche of retail investors. Right. In, you must admit, yeah. in general, that that retail crowd does not appreciate that type of detail. Yeah. Or fat- um, detail. Well, it's it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to know whether whether marginal uh, value accrues. You know, we've got to look for a for a catalyst in this market. I mean, we were talking just before we started recording about the mood in the market and about do you slow down your project or do you just kind of forge ahead and just trust in the process that that valuation is going to be picked up? Well, yeah, you're right. So if if you choose to uh, halt all exploration activities or anything that can continue creating value on your project, I think maybe you're telegraphing to the market that your project is is essentially stalled or, or capped out or peaked, uh, or or essentially that they, you have no more money. In our case, we have money in the bank to continue advancing the project, uh, it, it, especially for at least another year or year and a half. And we know that what we're doing is going to continue building value and de-risking the project, namely the drilling, the resource assessment, which we just filed, and the PEA. And we'll, it'll get us to a better place. Uh, if the markets continue to be negative, then I'll make. We'll have to make other decisions. But I and and so the arguments for to continue drilling and to continue advancing is that well, theoretically, if everybody is stopping work, it frees up that manpower, that lab capac- that lab capacity and engineers and specialists to look at your project. They will be attracted to, to the ones that continue working. Um, and, and secondly, if if you're the only one working and the others have stopped working, it'll free up that news flow or that awareness capacity that you're able to generate. And so for us, you know, we want to keep working because uh, the project uh, clearly has indicated they can continue to grow. And I think basically our transaction with O3 Mining is a testament to that. Uh, now that we've taken away the property boundaries, the mineralization can be investigated and keep growing, obviously, through our drilling east and west in a depth. Uh, the PEA will suggest or will tackle the, the high cost line items. Um, PEAs are not designed to give you exactly uh, what uh, the project's worth. It, it, it's, they're, they're, they're designed to say, this is, this is what it can be worth and what you need to do next. And that's what we're working on, right? Uh, where, where is look? And I, I think recently the, the inflationary headwinds that have been hitting mining projects have forced consultant companies, uh, mining companies, to rethink the heavy cost line items, and that's what companies such as ours will benefit from. All these new findings that they could build into our our, our preliminary economic assessment. Well, because um, <clears throat> you're saying that you, you always retain the opportunity to do um, toll treatment or that there's inflationary pressures are kind of easing out of the, the labor market. It's, so what, what do you mean by that? What, what I meant by that is, for instance, building a new head frame and buying a new hoist, those are high cost items, right? And, and, then, and then first of all, and then second of all, you have to find these things. So... Is there another way of, of, of attacking a deposit like Chimo since you already have a shaft? Well, yeah, vertical conveyors, uh, attacking it with a ramp, building your ore, ore, ore sorting facilities underground. Uh, and since you are in Quebec, well, you know, pulling all the levers, the bells and whistles to, to, to make this a, you know, um, a new fleet of electro- electric uh, vehicles and eliminate ventilation uh, fan pipes and stuff like that because you're not using diesel. You know, all, all these things could be built in. Uh, you could build in better mining techniques and technologies and, and metallurgical uh, approaches. 
with a project because you 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 you're you're in line and you're benefiting from what's being doing uh, being done locally. And um, <clears throat> let's just touch on Agnico and O3. What's the what's the level of conversation that you have with them on a regular basis? Or um, you know, uh, it, is Agnico represented on your board? They have the opportunity to put a member of the board. They and they have and they have had that opportunity by virtue of the uh, investor rights agreement since 2016. And they've never elected to put a person on the board. And I, I would, I think that betrays the fact that, you know, we have a, uh, an open conversation with them since the very beginning uh, and, and we share information and, and you, and, and, and people must not think that there's an information asymmetry because of that. Uh, maybe perhaps in the, in the initial years, but since the project has evolved so much, uh, we've leveled off that information asymmetry by providing the markets and um, competitors with um, access to the data room, uh, mind you, uh, via non-disclosure agreements and stuff like that. And uh, similarly with O3, are they, you, you talk to them on a regular basis or? Well, they, they have a member uh, of, of their team on our board. Uh, and, uh, you know, the... The, the local juniors have always been very collaborative. Uh, we, we have a vested right to do so because of the cross-pollination of ideas and, and approaches to exploring a project can, can rapidly vault you to a different level. And, and so sharing ideas and sharing, you know, uh, approaches is always very beneficial. And when it comes to Kind of valuing your your um, shares, you know yeah. how do you how do you say what your share price should be valued at? Well, you know what do you use as your yardstick? What do you use as your measure? Well, in our case, we simply have to look at what was being done has been done in the market and compare apples with apples. Uh, the, the local trend, the local companies that have transacted recently, uh, Monarch with uh, Yamana for the Wasamak deposit or QMX with El Dorado for their land package. The metrics there were quite different because I, we believe that the El Dorado QMX was mostly a, a land package approach and not an ounce count approach. Um, the Yamana stuff was a, was a project where Wazamak had been relatively well priced with a feasibility study. And, and so it was on an MPV metric. Um, so, so you have to reduce that to an, an, an ounce metric for Cartier right now and compare ounces with ounces uh, in, in the same jurisdiction. What we're looking to gain with the PA is a pr very preliminary uh, new set of metrics to compare us with the current M&A transactions. Now that being on like, when I say that, I mean that on an NPV metric approach. But that having been said, uh, Merlin, Recently, we've seen the price of gold fluctuate um, quite importantly. Yep. We've seen the inflation and the, the cost go up on certain line items for projects being reflected in PAs and the CapEx, runaway CapEx and stuff like that. So, and that's, that's very recent in the last 12 months. And so in these choppy waters, it is very difficult to properly price a, a, an asset. And it's... Maybe the, the, the senior mining companies have uh, um, their own set of filters. In our case, we know that we simply, when we know we have a project that's going to fly, we simply need to continue navigating those waters to keep advancing the project. And, you know, the sailing analogy is, is, is always the best one. From A to B, it's not a straight line. You have to adjust your sails and, you know, and, and, and go to where, towards where you want to go. Can I just revisit that point you made about um, investing or standing still? Because there are some that would say, why invest $5 million in exploration? Even if your, let's say your discovery cost is, uh, I don't know, $10 an ounce or something. Um, <clears throat> you, um, you know, you find, what is that, half a million ounces um, with $5 million. Um and it doesn't. It's not reflected in your market cap. Your market cap, probably. I mean, you've got 
over two million ounces and your market caps less than eight dollars now so it's, you know your your and I, let's say your expiration cost was ten dollars an ounce but you're being valued on eight dollars an ounce yeah merlin that's a that's a very tough question or angle at listen we have put together a property around a, a, a past producing mine that has a very robust and extensive data set, which has provided us with some very clear and uh, um, geological vectors that has immensely profited this, our, our, our approach to exploration. I mean, our, our success rate in drilling has been tremendous. With just under 60,000 meters of diamond drilling, uh, we were able to come up with about 2.3 million ounces. Well, mm. 700 indicated and 1.663 in the inferred. It, uh, in a very smallish um, panel, uh, about three kilometers by <clears throat> three kilometer strike length by down to 1.5 uh, kilometer uh, a depth. And so we know we have a system right now that's in the 2,700 ounce per vertical meter range, which is a re relatively robust and it can continue to grow. And it was now that we've eliminated the boundaries. So for us, it's we're just guided by science and facts, um, you know, and, and, and so the drilling that we've embarked on is we believe as low risk, high reward that we can ever get. You know, I've, I've rarely been in a situation in my career where we believe the exploration program can continue to grow a project the way it's going to grow. And the, the, the preliminary economic assessment team is in, is in discussions with our exploration team on a, you know, a relatively constant basis with, you know, chaperoning engineers just to make the best of the whole situation. If, if, and keep in mind that one of the reasons we're not infilling our inferred to, uh, to indicated right now is, well, the PEA will actually say, look, if you're going to be doing infilling at a future date, infill here rather than here, because it's going to add, these ounces have a lot higher value in the first 10 years of mining versus yeah. those. So it's, so for us, the PA is going to provide analysts and fund managers with a metric by which they could evaluate us. But for us, it's just further guidance to continue to advance this project, uh, you know, in the most optimal way. So it's, again, it's for us, I like to say we're on a pathway to production process approach to advancing this project. And so these mar markets will be difficult and they've been difficult for juniors and seniors alike, you know, for the past three or four decades. And, and, uh, and it's the, just... The, 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 the. <laughs> It's there have been the some way. there there have been some good windows in there, um, but yeah, no, I I'm well. The ups, been more lean uh, years. Listen, the uptime, the bull markets, or the up, the upticks are shorter and shorter, and the downticks are longer and longer. So that's one further reason I say to people, if you're just going to shut off the lights and wait it out just to conserve cash, and that uptick comes up and it comes, it you know the markets will turn quick. And you're, you're, you're not going to be able to catch up. And perhaps that uptick will, will, will downturn once again. So you always have to continue being relevant and, and advancing your project. That's our signature right now. I, I, I always work on the basis that quality ounces, if you've got good quality ounces that can be mined economically, there are these metrics that kind of persist over time. Um, and whether it's 40 or 50 or 60 or even $100 per resource ounce, as long as that bulk of that resource is going into the to the mill um, and mm -hmm. making money, you know, that's that's a kind of a guideline. Um, <clears throat> and there's also acknowledgement that when something is in production, it, they trade north of $250 and often at around $400 per reserve ounce. Yeah. So the the... The philosophy behind advancing your two or two and a half million ounces to the more uh, de-risked stage is that you've got greater chances of getting from the from the eight dollars an ounce that it currently is to the fifty, and then possibly beyond to the hundred, maybe to the two hundred. Um, it, it's it, just it provides you with a further defense mechanism. 
because you never know, you know, it, it, it could be from one of the local producers, but at one point, especially now that we have a district scale or camp scale land package, uh, you never know when somebody will come in from the left field. And so, no. and so you want to be at every possible stage of the game in a position to best value your project, either for a transaction or to continue advancing it or make the proper decision if that it comes to that, to build it yourself. And, and then, and then if, if you have, if you have the proper work done, then you could knock on the right doors and, 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 and get it done. Well, I mean, the, 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 the simplest uh, uh, rationale for a neighbor to buy you is because they think, well, hang up, hang about, it's going to cost us $50 an ounce to de-risk more ounces on our property, but we can buy some advanced ounces over here for a small premium to eight dollars an ounce, or whatever the whatever the valuation is at the time. Um, Absolutely. If you have if you have a guy if you have a group in the camp that's mining, I don't know, hundred or hundred twenty thousand ounces per year, and they acquire Chimo, and within a few years they 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 extract that same amount. They've just doubled their they're you know they're they're now producing three hundred or three hundred fifty thousand ounces per year. So I mean, and and eventually they will keep moving up. You know the. Okay, so let's let's talk quickly about timelines. You know what are your what are your milestones that you're going to be able to deliver to the market? Just to say, see, I told you so. Well, drill results uh, hopefully some before Christmas. Uh, the PA we're working intensely on it. I would like to get it done by Q4 of 2022, but I have no control on that. I just want the work to be well done, robust, credible, uh, 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 a foundational document for from for us to keep moving forward. So I'm not going to be the guy that that pushes it uh, simply to 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 meet a deadline and show up at, at a specific show with a with a news announcement. We've we've seen, for instance, the the flurry of news releases at the recent Beaver Creek. Event. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any difference, does it? But it's 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 good to be able to talk about it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what but, about um? um can, would you say Q one? Any CEO worth his salt can talk about his project. You know. Uh, at, at any time, he, like he's always got, you know, a uh, uh, value to deliver to his shareholders. So I, why does he need to wait for the new news release? Is all the old stuff that he's produced not good? Yeah, that doesn't um, make sense. Uh, so are you saying Q1 next year or are you going to say H1? I'd say Q1. Okay. I, I won't hold you to it, but it's it's good to know what you're thinking. Hold, hold, hold me to it because I think... From what I've seen and the advancements on it, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna set myself up for uh, for accountability here. Q1. Good. And, and drill results. Well, hey, if what I'm hearing locally is that people are shutting down their drills, well, that would only mean that we're it's going to free up the labs, yeah. maybe free up some machines, maybe free up some um some 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 personnel so it, it's all good for Carsey. and um canada always gets kind of some flow through buying at the end of the year D will that hopefully affect you know see some buying in in cartier or, or are you just gonna wait until the pea comes out and just mark it hard then that's a function of how we, we currently have about six million dollars in the bank so Technically speaking, we don't really need the cash. And the cash that we've seen hit the market right now is dilutive cash. Um, but that being said, uh, we're drilling two solid zones right now. And I uh, don't want to get in a situation where I have to start to make decisions to curtail or, or you know, downsize a program. Um, and what you're leading to is, yeah, the, the in Canada, there's always the tax loss selling plus the flow through season, and that always happens October, November ish. So you're seeing an, 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 a not normal amount of pressure on junior stocks in this part of the world during the October, November period because people expect to say, Well, I'm going to get in on the cheap or whatever. I, you know, um, it's unfortunate, but that's what's that's what happens. Good. Well, um. Philip, thank you so much. It's been really interesting talking to you about this. I, I think for me, the next milestone will be to 
kind of look at that PEA in when it comes out early next year and to go through it. And hopefully that will have a, um, a re-rating impact on, on the stock. Yeah, well, listen, I, I, I think this, this applies to a lot of com- mining companies out there. Right now, the market is providing them with uh, uh, the capacity to go out there and hunt down all, um, some very good value propositions and investment opportunities. If they don't take that chance to do their homework, then you know, um, what I want to continue doing is raise awareness and build value in the project uh, and, and hope these markets turn. So do we all. We all want these markets to turn. <laughs> Thank you. Be well. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.